Hey guys, this is Ben Morrow. I'm a senior concept designer and art director in the game and film industry, currently working on Halo Infinite. Today I want to talk to you guys about some intro warm-up exercises to do if you're starting out and are wanting to be a concept designer on games and films. This is some really basic introduction stuff that I think will be helpful to get you in the right mindset and get your hand skills up to speed to start building up some mileage to build your visual library and kind of point you in the right direction for how to start learning on your own and growing as a designer. So first off, some recommendations for books. I would definitely pick up these two books by Scott Robertson called How to Draw and How to Render. Uh, a lot of the exercises and things I'll be going over are a lot of foundation things found in these books and what I learned in school. These are basically the foundation skills that every concept designer has and uses every day. So the first exercises I would recommend, sort of like warm-ups before you start drawing, I'd recommend using pen and paper just because there's no undos. It'll maybe break you out of your routine a bit if you've just been purely digital. Just some basic cubes in perspective, cylinders, pyramids, maybe some wheels. You'll see exactly how steady your hand is or how unsteady your hand has gotten over the years from using digital. These are some really old and embarrassing warm-up sketches I did. I took a friend in coworkers class, David Heidoff, and he went through a lot of this stuff. Some of this I'm going to be assignments and things from the class that he did. I would highly re recommend taking his class whenever he's available to teach or mentor. It's just really helpful to get warmed up before you start getting into more complex objects. Everything we draw can kind of be made up of a lot of these very simple objects and it's helpful to just get warmed up drawing these simple forms in perspective before you get going. So the next exercises I would do is some hard surface studies. Typically I would get some reference of a specific vehicle, try to get as much reference as you can. Usually I would draw out the volume of the space. Basic, this is where the boxes you're warming up on come in handy. Draw the basic volume that this object is taking place in. Draw a side view. You can kind of stretch it out into space to get a sense for how it sits in that volume. So once you get the reference for what you're doing, I would do a f the first sketch, which in this case is the one in the upper left that I'm doing looking at reference. Try not to use any undos, try to not use any perspective grids, don't use lazy Nozomi or any extra tools. Try to do it exactly how you do it on paper. For example, the ellipses on the wheels are a little wonky, but I tried to do it one shot, no undos, to get my ellipses and just use that, even though if I use guides and things, I know it'll look a lot better, but I wanted to do this, again, for my own personal growth and improvement. So the one on the upper left is done from reference. The one on the right was using the reference I had, but doing an angle that wasn't found in the reference. So I didn't have any photo reference of the top view or any kind of view like this. So I used what I learned from the forms in the reference and my first sketch to try to replicate a different angle. So it's basically teaching you to start thinking in 3D and understanding the forms more deeply so that you can replicate them from your imagination. So the third thing to do is to take away all your reference and do a third sketch completely from imagination without looking at anything to try to see how much information you retained from those first two sketches and the reference. And you can see I kind of got a lot of the proportions wrong and a lot of things are maybe out of scale. So you, you kind of quickly see a lot of the things you need to work on and focus on and tighten up as you're learning to replicate these forms in your head and build up a stronger visual library for these military forms. Same exercise here, top left one was from reference, the right one was a new angle while still using reference, and the bottom one is completely from memory or imagination. Third one, same thing, upper left from reference, right one using reference but an angle I didn't have in the reference, and bottom one completely from imagination. You can see a couple things were starting to get a little wonky but still just trying to do this for yourself and try to see how much you can remember. Also, I found something that helps is drawing the object in side view. It helps you lock down and nail a proportion. Sometimes when you're drawing it in perspective, it can be a little hard to understand the, the proportion, but when you draw it in side view, it kind of helps you get that down and drawing things in orthographic as well helps you lock down the exact proportion of the object. Just another helpful thing to think about and use while you're practicing and doing these exercises. So in closing on these early warm-up exercises, cube, cylinders, pyramids to warm up. This is kind of what I would do every night to get my hand and wrist warmed up before I started doing more complex things. And the second exercise I would recommend is 
picking some cool hard surface objects, some cool military designs, tanks, trains, helicopters, all that good stuff is really good to start building up your visual library of really complex industrial forms. Just one from reference, one from a different angle from reference, and a third sketch without any reference, without looking at any photos or, or anything, and see how much you retain. Start building up that muscle. I think these two exercises are really good beginner exercises to try out. It'll just help you get warmed up, get some mileage, and just start building up a visual library of complex forms really fast. And this is the kind of stuff you can never do too much of. There's always something to learn. There's always some new forms to understand and try to replicate in 2D. And it's just uh, keep at it, have fun with this stuff. Doing a lot of this in between projects is really helpful. So the other thing I wanted to touch on was some really basic design principles. This is the kind of stuff I learned in school. And the older I got and the more I've been a designer on jobs, this is the kind of stuff that really is the foundation of design and understanding it's just a more constructive, analytical way to start thinking about designs so that you aren't endlessly coming up with silhouettes or just praying that you magically stumble on a good design. This is just a vocabulary that you can start to build up in your mind to logically and thoughtfully plan and create successful, meaningful designs. So things like unity and variety, balance, hierarchy, proportion, emphasis, movement, rhythm and flow, symmetry and asymmetry, these are all extremely valuable things to understand and also to use to analyze other people's work in order to improve your own work. So as a third exercise, I would recommend doing studies of designs that you like, really breaking down the design elements and design principles listed here in that work and trying to understand why it works, what makes that design cool, what makes that design functional, what makes that design really appealing and successful and timeless and it's really important to understand all these things, and I think doing studies of things you like is a very is probably the quickest way to come to that understanding. And these are things that are just for yourself. It's not something you're going to put in your portfolio or show off or whatever. It's just warm-ups and studies to do in between personal work to help grow and expand your abilities as a designer. So these are some studies I've done over the years. This first one is one of Doug Chang's episode one spaceships. Growing up, I really loved the spaceship in the movies and just starting to break things down and analyze them. And I talk about this in one of the other videos, but sort of like the 80-20 rule or 70-30 rule, always kind of skewing things in an offset, never doing something 50-50 to avoid that kind of balance like when you kind of break things up evenly, it becomes a little boring and there's no statement to the design, right? It doesn't have a strong voice to it. And I feel like the way Doug broke up and did the color break up on this is very strong. 85% of it is red, 10 or 15% is these gray accents, and maybe two or 3% is these really dark accents. One, two, three hierarchy of big, medium, small shapes, big, medium, small color. The overall analyzing the line work I was finding that there's a ton of forward momentum and flow to this design. Even though it's very angular, There's a, all the shapes help push the design in a very forward momentum. All the big, medium, small shapes, all the angles on the wings lead the eye forward, just creating a very strong forward momentum and flow to this design that helps the viewer understand in a couple seconds that this is a even though it's kind of big, it's still a very fast looking ship and you feel like you know exactly which direction it's going. So aside from just the analyzing the shapes and things, you can kind of take it even further into more of uh, simplifying the forms and trying to understand maybe a deeper level form language and symbology put into the design. In this case, when I did the top view sketch, it really felt like a big like space, like an X or the letter T, again, creating a much stronger visual design and visual language that the viewer can understand. If you're English speaking, everyone has seen the letter T or some form of that. If you haven't grown up speaking the English language, everyone understands what an axe is. And so these visual motifs also are another way he strengthened this design. And just analyzing all this stuff, you kind of start to get the gist of it or the DNA of 
what he was going for and how he's thinking and analyzing design problems and coming up with really strong, su- successful solutions that make those films and movies and games that we play memorable and iconic. And these are things that now I always put into my designs because I've studied and analyzed these things that I like. This was another study I did of a Daniel Simon's Tron bike, which itself was a update and reimagining of one of Sid Mead's old designs for the original Tron. Something I always felt that was lacking in my work was a strong gestalt or black and white graphic design breakup, so I really thought there was something there that I could learn from. And so the flow breakdown, I found all the lines and and the form language was kind of a mixture of organic and hard surface, and it just creates a very sleek, minimal look. And all the forms and lines in the design continually lead the eye forward, which is just really eye-catching and appealing and interesting. And it was interesting to see how he broke his forms up in the second image, that just the overall gestalt. There's, again, kind of a 60% white and 40% black ratio. Maybe it's closer to 70-30, but again, it's not 50-50. It's, it's that offset that I'm always finding more interesting in designs. It's one of the reasons that kind of drew me to this design and made me want to analyze why I felt it was successful. So another thing, like the previous spaceship, I wanted to analyze the the flow, the angle variance, and how all these things could help create a focal point and forward momentum to this design. And again, just kind of analyzing the angles of all these bigger forms and shapes and how they all help push the design visually forward, even to the point of uh, the triangle in the back kind of helping emphasize of just like, go this way kind of thing. So the viewer instantly knows the the front of the vehicle versus the back of the vehicle. And you don't have to explain anything. You just kind of get it, which is definitely one of the qualities of, of a successful design. Another analysis I did was of the LaFerrari. So again, the designers over there have a incredible understanding of flow and design. And, you know, before this, I, I liked this design, but I never really thought about why I liked it, what drew me to it. I never analyzed the forms, but you can see in some of my breakdowns, especially the top view, you can just see how air flows through this design beautifully. It's very symmetrical. The color breakup, again, is very skewed, you know, 90% or 80% red, black, and with accents of yellow and gray. The angle variance on this especially is very strong and is working very well. You can see there's just a strong forward momentum. Every angle is parallel to each other, helping to create a very forward momentum to this design. So it just feels like it's already moving really fast. And starting to, at the bottom, starting to break down the shape language in the design, There's just an overall shape and form language in this that is very strong and just is a really good thing to to start analyzing and understanding and seeing where they might have taken their inspiration from in nature or wherever. Just, again, a lot of things to take in and understand to help apply to your imaginary work. Another design I studied was uh, one of Sid Mead's old Moon Lander rover sketches. This one especially just always kind of popped out in his old sketchbooks. Wanted to analyze how he broke down shapes, how he especially how he presented and visualized them. And I think the human mind is just fascinated with this black and white interplay of shapes. And I feel like Sid does such an incredible job with that graphic design aspect that makes his images hard to look away from. And in the bottom part where I was just analyzing the the gestalt of these two black and white shapes, you can just see like it's a very complex, interesting breakup of black and white that you just can't look away from. And I feel like even if your design is okay, if your black and white graphic design breakup is super strong, it'll be a successful, interesting image at the very least. Just something really important I think I knew about, but I never really paid much attention to it or took the time to focus on it and put it in my work. And I feel like my work would be a lot stronger over the years if I had learned this sooner. So if you're just starting out or maybe you've been doing this for a while, Definitely start to think about this earlier than later and think about how to strengthen the graphic design breakup of your work. So one of the last studies I did was of one of my friend, Von Ling. He does these amazing spaceship sketches. Uh, this one in particular, I really love. And again, I didn't know why. I could tell he was, it was kind of felt kind of influenced by a LaFerrari and the flow again was very beautiful. He has a lot of organic 
sculptural qualities to his designs. There's kind of like an automotive roadster car in space kind of thing that I thought was really cool. And again, the breakdown of panels to engine parts was 85-15, like a really skewed ratio, which is always interesting. And on a deeper level, I really like this kind of idea of calm organic forms wrapping the kind of complex engine parts. And you see this a lot in sci-fi design. And I kind of understood that when I saw designs and I liked them because of that, but I just didn't analyze the idea that now I can use very easily. It's kind of an interesting separation to play with in your designs and uh, just interesting idea to a design principle to understand and, and try out. So these are just a couple studies I've done over the years of different designs I liked and trying to analyze using some of the basic design principles of unity and variety, balance, hierarchy, proportion, emphasis, movement, rhythm and flow, symmetry and asymmetry. These are just some of them, but there are definitely some to start thinking about. And there are a lot you can find more for yourself that you can start understanding how they work how other people have used them successfully by breaking down and analyzing designs you like and taking that understanding and applying it into your own work to make your own designs more successful. I would also like to recommend Dave Heidhoff for the class I took with him. He really organized and broke all this stuff down really fantastic. And this is just like the tip of the iceberg of some of the things he goes over. So from those studies, these are some designs I did trying to take some of that into consideration and apply to my own designs, sometimes successfully, sometimes not successfully, but you can see I'm taking that understanding of splitting up the color ratio in a more skewed way, trying to understand and think about the graphic design breakup of my orange and black shapes so that even if you turn the color off and made it graphic, this would create a very interesting interplay of black and white shapes creating a strong visual flow even though it's very angular forms so you can kind of tell which direction is the front even though it's kind of an exaggerated industrial cargo in space same thing here really playing up the color breakup skewing things another thing to think about as well is sort of a, a contrast design principle of just the more complex your design is the simpler the paint job should be so it's easier to understand. If you have a really complex form and a really complex paint job, it's going to be too confusing. You can see here the form and details kind of get pretty complex. If I made every panel a different color, it would just be a mess. But by unifying it with a strong, you know, 80, 85% red, you kind of get, oh, it's, you know, it's a red spaceship. Okay, red spaceship with some white stripes. Just some things to think about again to help unify and strengthen your designs. So in closing, I think these three warm-up exercises will be super helpful to get your hand skills up to speed, starting to build a visual library with real-world objects, and analyzing imaginary designs for films or games or comic books or whatever you like. These three things will help you, one, start understanding how to draw, two, help you analyze real life, how things are constructed, how real-world objects are put together, and start building up a library of realistic forms in your head and the third study will help you start analyzing and understanding how people have taken this real world stuff, abstracted it, and created successful imaginary designs using these real world things as a basis. And practicing these three things, I think, will help you start structuring things in your mind to understand what makes things good, what makes things bad, why some things successful and other things aren't successful. It'll start getting your opinion as a designer started as well, which I think is very important. As a designer, we have to say something with our work and analyzing and studying how other people have said things is a good way to get started down the path of creating your own unique voice. I just think these three things are really great beginner exercises. And these are things you can kind of never get enough of, you know, there's, you're never going to understand everything in the entire world. There's always something new and cool to study. So I think even if you've been doing this a long time, this is always pretty good to go back to if you're feeling rusty or maybe your imaginary designs are lacking something and going back to the basics and studying real things, analyzing things you like is always a good thing to get that muscle growing again. 
So I hope these warm-up exercises and some early design principles are going to be helpful and useful for you to start growing and learning as a designer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.